Hey everyone, CLB is cussing singly linked lists through animations and explanations, so stay tuned. So what is a singly linked list? A singly linked list is a data structure that is made up of a list of objects called nodes. And each of these nodes contains data and a single reference to the next node in the list. And here's a visual representation of what that would look like. In this case, we have three nodes. And each node has those two things we spoke about some data, and a reference to the next node in the list. Our first node has a reference to our second node, our second node has a reference to our third node, and our third node has a reference to null. Our first node always has a head reference. So let's get to the structure of a linked list. Here I'm using Java, but the idea of a linked list is really independent of the programming language used. So let's go through the code. Here I have a node class that has two instance variables, my data and a reference next. Notice that my next reference has a, has a type of node, so it can reference an object of that type. And then I have my constructor. My constructor takes in an argument's data and initializes my instance variable data with that argument's data. I still initialize my next to null regardless if it was initialized before or not. The next thing we have is a linked list class. In my linked list class, I still have that head reference like I spoke about in the previous slide. Again, I have my linked list constructor that takes in an argument head and initializes my instance variable head to that argument head. Here's what it would look like if I wanted to add a new node with data 4 to the list. All I say is head equals to new node and I pass in that data 4. And here's how I would add another node to my list. I can say head.next equals to new node and I pass in that data that I want to add. In this case, I want to add 8, so I pass in the data 8 and that's how I would add a node to my existing list. Now, suppose I wanted to add a node to the end of a list, but I didn't know the size of the list. How do we really get to that last node? We need some way to reference it. So maybe use our head reference variable? Oh, uh, no, that's a bad idea. We can't use our head reference variable because our head always has a reference to the front of the list. If we remove that reference from the front of the list, what happens is we destroy that object with data 4, and that's what we don't want to do. So another way to do this is to use a second reference variable. I'll call my reference cur. Notice that it is of type node. It'll also hold a reference to the same object that my head reference is, so in this case 4. Now I say cur is equal to cur.next, and then I'll set cur's next to equal to that new node with data 12 that I want to add. And that's how we would use a second reference variable to add our node with data 12. Now, suppose that we didn't have any linked list nodes in our linked list. So how do we handle that case? Well, we want to first create that node that we want to add. In this case, I called my node n. So now my n references a node with data 16, and I make a conditional check. I check if my head is equal to null. In this case, yeah, my head is equal to null. So all I do is set my head to reference the same object that n references. And that's how I would add a node to the end of a list if I didn't have any nodes in my list. Now, suppose I wanted to add a node to the end of my list, but I did have some nodes in my ex existing list. Then how would I do that? So again, like I did before, I have my cur reference, the same object my head references, and in my while loop, I want to check the condition that my curs.next is not equal to null. At the point where my curs.next is equal to null, then I know I've reached to the last node in my list. I can simply take that node's next and have it reference the new node n that I want to add in my list. So let's see what that looks like. So in my while loop, I check, is my curs.next not equal to null? Well, my curs.next is not equal to null, so I set my cur equal to cur.next. Again, I check if my curs.next is not equal to null. Well, my curs.next is not equal to null again, so I set my cur equal to cur.next. Finally, is my curs.next not equal to null? Well, it is equal to null, so I set my curs.next to reference the same object that my n references, and that's how I would add a node to the end of a list. 
Now, I challenge you to add a node to the start of the list. As an example, suppose I want to add the node with data 4 to the start of my list. Then it would look exactly like the link list at the bottom. So pause the video and give this a try, and press play when you're ready to hear the solution. So here's how I would do this. So when we want to add a node to the start of the list, we don't have to loop the list because we just want to add a node to the front. And if we think about it, we already have a reference to the first node in the list. So let's take, take a look at this. We create our new node. In this case, I named my node n. It holds the data 4. Then all I do is set my end next to reference the same object that my head references. Then I set my head to reference n. And because my end is a local variable, it gets destroyed. And that's how I would add a node to the start of a list. So just like how we added a node to the start of a list, I challenge you to add a node after some given node in a list. So here's an example to look at. Suppose I want to add the node with data 8 after the node with data 4. Then the linked list on the bottom is the resulting linked list that I'm looking for. And here's what I want that method to look like. The name of my method is called add after. It has two parameters, uh, insert after, which is a node that I want to insert after, in this case, the node with data four, and the data that I want to insert in my list. In this case, I want to insert the node with data eight. So again, pause the video and press play when you're ready to see the solution. So here's a solution. The first thing I wanna do is create that cur reference to reference the same object that my head references. Then I want to loop until the end of the list. So my condition is going to be while my cur is not equal to null. So if my cur is not equal to null, which it is not in this case, then I check if that cur's data is a data that I want to insert after. In this case, suppose my data that I want to insert after is 4, then yes, my cur's data is a data that I want to insert after. So all I do is create that new node object. Again, it's referenced by the variable n. And then I set ends.next to curs.next. Then I set curs.next to n. And that's how I would add a node after a given node in the list. So I simply just break out of the loop when I'm done. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that if my list had no nodes in it, in this case, my head is equal to null. If you look at that first statement in my method, node cur is equal to head, then our cur will be set to null and this while loop will never get executed. So the method works perfectly. Now, suppose I wanted to delete a node at the end of a list. Now, just like my previous methods, the first thing I want to do is have a node cur reference the same object my head references. And then I want to make a conditional check. I want to check if my cur is equal to null or my curs.next is equal to null. The reason I want to check if my cur is equal to null is because if there's no node to delete, then all I want to do is return null. Now if my cur is dot next is equal to null, or simply the heads dot next is equal to null, then what I want to do is have my head not reference that first node anymore. I want to remove it. So I set my head equal to null, and I return null. In this case, however, my head isn't equal to null, nor is my heads.next equal to null. So what I want to do is create a new reference variable called the next node. It will keep track of the next node in the list. So when I get to the end of the list, my next node will have a reference to the last node in the list, as you will see, and that will be used to remove that last node. So I loop until my curs.next is equal to null. In this case, my curs.next is not equal to null, so I make a conditional check. I check if my next nodes.next is equal to null. Well, my next nodes.next isn't equal to null, so I set my cur to my next node, and then I set my next node to its next. Then I make that check in my conditional if my next nodes.next is equal to null. Well, my next nodes.next is equal to null, so I set my curs.next equal to null, and I set my cur equal to next node. Then I set my next node equal to its next, and the reason I want to hold a reference to that last node in the list is because I want to return that node after I delete it. So again, I check if my curs.next is not equal to null, and yes, my curs.next is equal to null, so I simply return cur, and that's how I would delete a node at the end of a list.
Now I challenge you to delete a node at the start of a list. So in this case, suppose my nodes at the start of a list has a data 4. Then I want to remove that node, so my head will now reference the node with data 8. So again, pause the video and press play when you're ready to hear the solution. So here's the solution. The first thing I want to do is check if my head is not equal to null. Because if my head is equal to null, then all I have to do is just return null. In this case, however, my head isn't equal to null. So I create a second reference variable called toDelete that will reference the same object my head references. Because I want to return that object, I also want to keep track of it. Then I set my head equal to head.next, and all I do is return toDelete. And that's it. We successfully deleted the node at the start of our linked list. Now I challenge you to delete the node with data 8. So in this case, it's the node after the node with data 4. So again, pause the video and press play when you're ready to see the solution. Great, so I hope that went well. Here's the solution. So the first thing I do is have a variable cur reference the same object my head references. Then I would have a toDelete reference variable reference null at the moment, but that would keep track of the node that I want to delete. Then I want to loop through every node in the list and make a conditional check. I want to check if that curse node's data is a data I want to remove. And I also want to check if my curse.next is not equal to null. And that's the case if I want to remove an intermediate node, as you will see as I move further on with this illustration. So the first thing I want to do, because my curse data is equal to the data that I want to remove after, I set my to delete to curse.next. Then I set curse.next to toDeletes.next, and then I'm done. I simply break out of this loop. And that's how I delete a node after a given node. Now, in the case that I wanted to remove a node after the last node of the list, well, in that case, there is no node after the last node in the list. So when I go into my while loop, my, my conditional fails. I simply proceed by saying cur is equal to cur.next. So my cur now goes to null. I simply just return to delete, which will be null because that's what it was initialized to. And that's it. Now let's move on to the complexity analysis. So for the time complexity for insertion, if we wanted to insert a node at the front of the list, then all we have to do is have that new node's next reference the head, and then have that head reference the new node. And as you can see, that's a constant time operation. On the other hand, if you wanted to insert a node at the end of the list, then as we've seen, we'd have to traverse the entire list to get to the end, and only then can we insert the node. So that would be a linear time operation. Similar to insert at end, if you want to insert a node after a given node, in the worst case, we can't even find that node. So we'd have to traverse the entire list anyway. So that, again, would be a linear time operation. Now let's move on to the space complexity of insertion. If you wanted to insert a node at the front of the list, we're not using any extra space. So that's going to have a constant space complexity. Similarly to insert at front, if we wanted to insert a node at the end of the list, again, we're not using any extra space. So that's also going to be a constant space complexity. If you wanted to insert a node after a given node, likewise, we're not using any extra space to do so. So that's also going to be a constant space complexity. Now for the time complexity for deletion, if you want to delete a node at the front of the list, all we have to do is have our head reference variable reference the next node in the list if it exists. And that's going to be a constant time operation. In the case that we want to delete the node at the end of the list, then we have to traverse the entire list to remove that node. So that's going to be a linear time operation. And similar to delete end, if you want to delete a node after a given node, in the worst case, we don't even find that node we want to delete after, and that's going to be traversing the entire list again. So that's going to be a linear time operation. For the space complexity for deletion, deleting a node at the front of the list, again, it doesn't use any extra space to remove that node. So that's going to be a constant space operation. If you want to delete the node at the end of the list, again, there's no extra space being used. So that's also going to be a constant space operation. If you want to delete a node after a given node, similar to delete and then delete front, again, it's a constant space operation. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.